What do you get when you cross a crocodile, a blue dragon, and a centipede? I don't know why the storm giants asked that question, but they did, and now we all have to live with it. Well, I kinda know, they were made to hunt dragons in their lairs. Now the war's over, but these things are still powerful and always hungry. They start life with 6-8 to eight legs at around 2 feet long and are quickly kicked out of their nest. An adult has 12 legs and is at least 40 feet long if you count the tail. Their growth slows, but it never stops, so they sometimes reach gargantuan sizes. Given they lay 1-4 to four eggs every year and reach adulthood in just 10, you may wonder how the warm hills and cliffs aren't completely overrun. Well, the first limiter is food. They're solitary carnivores that claim hundreds of square miles as their turf. That food happens to be medium-sized creatures, swallowed whole as they scuttle off for a few hours to digest. And yes, this includes humanoids, leading settlements to hunt down young ones whenever possible. If you're a powerful hunter, you can make a good living tracking down Bahir during hibernation. Not only do you get the bounty, but their hides are thick for leather making and their blood and horn is used in spell making. Oh, and we can't forget that they have that instinctual hatred of dragons and hunt down any within miles. Don't try to run if it turns out they're outmatched, but this can definitely lead to their death. Admittedly, that is rare because Bahir are pretty powerful. They have the lightning breath of an adult blue dragon, yeah the CR-16 one, just not as far reaching. 50 foot movement means they outrun most creatures and their 12 clawed legs make them nearly as quick on the walls or ceilings. When it catches its prey, it constricts them and bites until it can swallow them whole. And when a creature is actually threatening, it uses the breath weapon, which I have to emphasize is the strongest attack in CR-11 by a landslide even if it only hits one person. And 20 foot reach isn't long, but this thing is really good at maneuvering. Don't think immunity to lightning makes you safe either, even without it the Bahir outdamages most things in its tier. On top of that we can't forget that they nest in cliffs. That leaves them with plenty of angles to attack and escape. Hurt them too much and they might just swallow whoever they've grabbed and bolt. I personally encounter them taking advantage of mountain passes and tower stairways, climbing the walls to ignore the front line and decimate casters. Like me! The only weakness they have is their intelligence, and mental saving throws in general. Without traits or abilities they're really straightforward, but frankly they don't need tricks. Its strength is just strength. Which might sadden some of you. Few parties make it to a level you can fight these things, and if I've done my job right, you're probably interested in them. Well, thankfully if we look to the past, we see the land of Halrua has us covered. But here have been bred down to half their size, dulling their minds and making them into guards that spark with power. Granted it also dulls their intelligence, but for a guard beast they're still clever and surprisingly loyal. Which sounds to me like for all their boasting, all they did was make them stop maturing early. Our modern tomes are lacking on young behavior here, so I brewed some up, link in the description. Young Bahir or Guard Bahir are definitely still powerful, but weak enough that most parties can actually encounter them, and social enough that they might not be alone. I also made a pocket Bahir, it's like two feet long and fits in your bag. Not only do they work great as hatchlings, they're the perfect warlock familiar for a weird NPC. Or for you if you ask your DM and they're cool with it. And speaking of asking people things, yes that's actually my transition, I'd like to ask you to press that like and subscribe button, leave a comment below to save the mini-legged algorithm, and thanks for watching. Class dismissed!